Get the right microphone. Okay, okay, good morning. Hey, is this better? Hopefully, hopefully you can hear us now. So sorry about that, guys. Kim's joining better. us this morning. Hey, good morning, Kim. Well, now we got to redo everything. Good morning. Welcome to Story of God Morning Devotional with David and Kara. M my name is David. We're having a hard time without that lower third. I'm Kara. <laughs> and we're working our way through the Bible. Don't do my name. One chapter at a time. So sorry, guys, that uh, that we had a little bit of audio issue this morning, but it looks like we are back uh, on track. So good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, Donna, that we were talking about. I saw Kim Godwin pop on here just a little bit earlier, if you're still watching, Kim. Good morning, we're going to be in Nehemiah chapter 11 this morning, so go ahead and open up. So sorry that yes. we had that issue. I don't know what I don't know what happened. I don't know either. We'll figure it out, I'm sure. But uh, we were, what were, oh, we were talking you about. You were talking I, about your issues. Yeah, so I, I had a hard time getting up, getting out of bed this morning. I think it's a combination of different things. And then I said, eliminate the combination. Thank you. For, for that. Um, it's logical. Yeah. This hurts. Don't do well, that. Then don't do that. This food made me sick. Don't eat it. 
Was that a direct comment? This food me? made me fat. <laughs> well, <laughs> eat it. Fast. Fast. We're actually, we're in Yom Kippur, if you don't know already. Uh, today, uh, we're in white pants because it's Yom Kippur. Yes, after Labor Day. Yeah, it really bothers me to wear white after Labor Day. <laughs> but it's Yom Kippur, and they they wear white uh, to signify um, for all of us in the South that we are all mortals and then we're dead and that and that we're dead. We're dead. We're dead. Um, that that we are um, we all were. prone to we're all prone to expire at one point or another. I don't know what it was. Expire. What did I say? No. Yeah. I, yeah. Expire. And so, um, I that was a fun way of putting that. And so, yeah, so we're, we're, these are mortal coils and one day we'll be no more. Yes. And, uh, and so, uh, in the South, part we, of the morning, in the South, we call it Yom Kippur, not, not Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur. Anyway, um, but, uh, but yeah, it's a time of reconciliation, uh, uh between each other, between ourselves, between us and God. So, uh, so take this opportunity to, uh, to connect in with uh, repentance and uh, reevaluation. These are always good thing. Reconnect and uh, ask old friends uh, or, uh, or folks that you've fallen out of uh, relationship with. Ask them, for, um, ask them for forgiveness, for past sins. So just a really good time. All right, let's jump into it. Nehemiah let's do it. chapter 11. All right. So now the leaders of the people settled in Jerusalem, and the rest of the people cast lots to bring out one of every ten to live in Jerusalem. So the city's built. It's not enough that the city is built, but it needs to be inhabited. You know the story where Jesus says, um, unless the house is refilled after it's been delivered, um, then the demon's going to come back and bring seven of his friends, and you're going to be completely, um, um, all can become demonized. So I'm just going to say it. Um, so it's the same way. We have to occupy the place of our promise. Yeah. If we don't occupy the place of our promise, then we're giving over the place of our promise. We're building up nice and pretty, and then we're giving it to the enemy. Um, but here's the deal. Think Old Testament. Sometimes we read the Old Testament. Okay. Okay, so my mom said something really, really good on Saturday at um, Women of Wonder. Okay. And she said... She said, sometimes we approach our enemies and we're like, all right, Lord, I'm open in the Psalms. All right, God, vindicate me. Vindicate me, God. But she says, she says, that's not a biblical, that's not a new covenant model for getting right with the ones who have wronged you. She said, the biblical model is, all right, Lord, I forgive them. Wash me. I repent now. Um you know, and, and getting right before the Lord ourselves. And I was like, what in the world? Wait just a minute. I like the Psalms thing. And then I just, the Lord said, the Lord said to me, as she said it, uh, as my mom's talking about it, the Lord said, don't you remember that in the old Testament, your enemies were natural, but under the new covenant, your enemies are all spiritual. The, the new covenant, the new Testament says we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, but with principalities and powers and rulers of the air. We wrestle with spiritual things. Now, anything and anyone who believes they are not our enemy. And I will say that again, because I think some of us can use that. Anyone who, again, anyone who believes is not our enemy. He's not my enemy. You're not my enemy. The, tr the the person who came and knocked over my trash cans. This hasn't happened. I was just thinking about my trash sitting out by the side of the road. The person who knocked over the trash can sitting out by the side of the road. They are not my enemy. The person who has smeared my name is not my enemy. The Satan, his evil forces, they are our enemies. No bleeding thing, no human thing is our enemy. So... So they have natural enemies in this context. So they need to occupy the city. But we don't have natural enemies. However, we still do need to occupy the place of our promise. We need to occupy the place of our city. I mean, the, the city of our promise. All right. Verse 2. The people were commended to... Uh, com commended... This, blah, blah, blah. Commanded. The people com commended... commended um, all the men who volunteered to live in Jerusalem, because let me be honest, 
anyone who has pioneered any, pioneered anything knows it's the easiest thing alive, right? Anything who's pioneer, anyone who's pioneered anything knows it is grueling work. And so that's exactly what the people who live in Jerusalem have ahead of them is grueling work is, is, um, few people to occupy this large city and to make it work, to reestablish culture, tearing down culture and reestablishing culture are such yeah. hard yeah. work. And we think, oh, well, it's just shifting our mindset. It is shifting our mindset and everything else about our life. And so um, they, there's a reason that they were commended. Verse 3, all the provincial leaders who settled in Jerusalem, now some Israelites, priests, Levites, temple servants, and descendants of Solomon's servants, lived in the towns of Judah, each on his own property in the various towns, while other people from both Judah and Benjamin lived in Jerusalem from the descendants of Judah. Sorry, I was counting Judah's um, place in the lineup of sons. No. Nope. I was, I couldn't remember where he was. <laughs> um, from the descendants of Judah, Athaiah, son of Uzziah, the son of Zechariah, the son of Amariah, the son of Shephatiah, the son of Mahalalel, a descendant of Perez, and Messiah, son of Baruch, the son of Kolhoset, the son of Hazaiah, the son of Adaiah, the son of Joriah, jo Joyarib. The son of Zechariah, the descendant of Shelah, the descendant of Perez, who lived in Jerusalem, totaled 468 able men. All right. So multiply that times three, and then you have the women. So um, a little more than 1,200. From the descendants of Benjamin, Salu, son of Meshulam, the son of Joed, the son of Kadeah, the son of Kaleah, the son of Messiah. The son of Ithiel, the son of Jeshea, and his followers, Gabai and Sali, 928 men. The son, Joel, son of Zikri, was their chief officer. And Judah, son of uh, Hasanuo, was over the second district of the city. From the priests, Judea, son of Joyarib, Jachin, Soraya, son of Hilkiah, the son of Meshulam, the son of Zadok. The son of Mariamoth, the son of Ahitab, supervisor in the house of God, and their associates who carried on work for the temple, 822 men. Adaiah, son of Jehoram, the son of Peleah, the son of uh, Amzi, the son of Zechariah, the son of Peshur, the son of Melchijah, and the associates who were heads of families, 242 men. Amashai, son of Azarel, the son of Ahazi the son of Meshulamah, the son of Emir, and his associates, who were able men. Please forgive me. 128. Their chief officer was Zabdiel, son of Hagedim, uh, Haged Olim. So I, I think it's important for us to ju just to take a look and see how much the people of God have dwindled um, in, uh, in their, uh, yeah, right. Um, uh, so I, I think the, uh, how much the people of God have dwindled since the time of David, uh, and Solomon, there were many fighting men, uh, in David and Solomon's time, many people who stepped up in order to, to do what it was that God needed to to happen. Um, it, it numbered at times even to, into the hundreds and thousands. Um, and since then, of course, in captivity, uh, the the numbers of the true Israelites, people who who stuck to their tribes and so on and so forth, dwindled um, because in captivity, of course, they they were asked to do different things. They were they they found themselves. Uh, intermarrying, they found themselves um, walking away from the people of God. Why? Uh, and and I think that that there's an important thing for us to to remember and have mercy on. So um, when you get to a place where where the people of God are down and out, um, or you get to a place and you say, "Wow, this place is not successful anymore. This people's not successful." It's very easy for us to make a transition and switch um, and move 
uh, uh, and move our allegiance or move our mindset and say, um, okay, well, this is a new, it's a new world. It's a new time. So when in Rome, be like the Romans, right? And right. to abandon the things that you have known uh, in order for ease and comfort. Um, and, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm talking to you very matter of factly, but, but this is something that I think if we looked at it, there's a pretty widespread uh, difficulty with this uh, in our current American culture, in our church culture um, that we have created for ourselves, where, uh, you know, if, if one place doesn't have the kind of programs that we want, uh, or if we have, or, or we walk into a place where there's a very small work, you know, God's very, uh, God is very um, uh, adamant when he speaks to us, do, do not despise small beginnings. Um, God, uh, you know, God sends David um, uh, in order to deal with uh, the, the Philistine giant. Um, and, and ultimately, David is not the, the big man. He's not Saul that everybody rallies around. David is a, is a very small player in the field at this time. And so I think the reality is uh, oftentimes we see uh, defeat or we see um, unsuccessfulness in our eyes and we tend to mark things as God's not blessing it because it's small or God's not blessing it because um, because it doesn't look like something big and strong. The reality is that even the smallest uh, fellowships, uh, even the smallest groups of people, um, uh, even the smallest uh, gatherings uh, can have big impact in the kingdom of God um, when they begin to recognize that that the Lord can deliver, that, that the, the mass of the object does not matter. The Lord can do great things through great or through small. I guess I guess that's a personal reflection. You know, right now at Masterwork, we're we have um, uh, we've we've got a very uh, tight knit group of, of a smaller group of people right now, and, um, and and I'm just recognizing the Lord's intention uh, on how He He uh, grows some things and and keeps others at a specific size. But I just I, I do want to say this ab about that. When we get into a situation where we are judging success by our own parameters, that becomes a that becomes a, a very uh, dangerous place to be. We have got to judge things on God's standards. Right now, um, in this story, Israel and Nehemiah, um, their enemies are judging them based upon the fewness of them. Um, Bildad, the Shuhite, and the other guys. Is that is that? Bildad Shuhite, or was that Job's friend? I forget. Anyway, <laughs> what, the 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 guys that in the future, God sees their size um, that is to come, and so and He is protecting with His heavenly resources the vision of the future of what Israel will be. So, if you've had a recent downturn. A difficulty, um, a, a a failure um, that you feel like, and you're you know you you've had to fall back and rejudge, and you're saying, well, I don't have as much as I used to. Remember the what, what, remember the widow's might. Remember remember the reality that God does not judge things based upon uh, mass. God judges things based upon heart, um, and the reality is. Even the widow's might was more than everything that, that Mr. Moneybags gave uh, because she gave everything that she had. Uh, and so just remember, no matter where you are, no matter what it looks like in your situation to the physical eye, God desires to use your current situation in order to accomplish. I just I, I felt that um, uh, I felt that very strongly as as we were walking through. And, you know, you notice the difference between and this tribe. Uh, in David's time, this tribe had 7,000 men, and then it says 136. <laughs> that's, that's all that's left. That's, uh, that's yeah. what we're currently walking through. Yeah. Um, you know, you had, to, you had to have a mind to endure trouble that, um, to dwell in, not trouble, but you had to have a mind to endure the problems of living in the, the um, newly established Jerusalem 
um, if that's what you were going to do with this time. Yeah. Um, um, all right, verse 15. Shimei, son of Hashub, the son of Azrakam, the son of Hashabiah, the son of Buni, Shabbatai and Jozabad, two of the heads of the Levites who had charged the outside work of the house of God, Mataniah, son of Micah, the son of Zabdi, the son of Asaph, the director who led in thanksgiving and prayer, Bak, uh, Bakbukai, second Bak among his... Bakbukai. 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 Uh, the second among, among his associates, and Abda, the son of Shemua, the son of Galal, the son of Jedathan, the Levites in the holy city, totaled 284. The gatekeepers, Akub, Talman, and their associates who were kept who kept watch at the gates, 172 men. The rest of the Israelites with the priests and Levites were uh, in all the towns of Judah, each on his ancestral property. So they went back to what, what had belonged to them. Yeah. As far as they could discern from the records um, 70 years prior. Right. Right. Now, that, that doesn't mean that that was without struggle. They probably had to fight, fight again for their territories. Because, I mean, all of us know that when, you know, when we leave, there are squatters that, <laughs> that want our stuff. All of us know from uh, first and second grade, if you get up from a seat, that seat is somebody else's. So they probably it's fair game. It's fair game. Yeah. Yeah. So they they may have had to um, do the battle all over. Not the battle, but they may have had to kick people off their land. Yeah. Um, they may have. I'm sure its ability to be um, a place of harvest had to be reconditioned. I'm yeah. sure the land itself had to be. Um, you're shaking. Sorry. That's all right. I'm sure the land had to be completely overhauled and um, re yeah reconditioned was a good enough phrase. Yeah. So um, it was not an easy task. I, I feel quite positive. The rest of the Israelites, verse twenty, um, with the priests and Levites were all were in all the towns of Judah. Each on his ancestral property, the temple servants lived on the hill of Ephel and Zia, and Gishpa were in charge of them. The chief officers of the Levites in Jerusalem was Uzi, son of Bani, the son of Hashabiah, the son of Madaniah, the son of Micah. Uzi was one of Asaph's descendants who were the singers uh, responsible for the service of the house of God. The singers were under the king's orders, which regulated their daily activity. Uh, Pethahiah, son of Meshezabel, one of the descendants of Zerah, son of Judah, was the king's agent in all affairs relating to the people. As for the villages with their kings, some of the people of Judah lived in Kiriath Arba and its surrounding settlements in Gibbon and its settlements in uh, Jacabzeel and its villages in Jeshua, in Malada, in Beth Palette, in Hazar Shual, in Beersheba and its settlements in Ziklag and Mechana, and its settlements in uh, en Ramon, in Zora, in Jarmuth, uh, Zenoa, Ajalum, and their villages in Lachish and its fields, and in Azica and its settlements. So they were living all the way from Beersheba to the valley of Hinnom, the descendants of the Benjamites. They were spreading themselves out because they were intending on repopulating. That's what happens when you have humans. <laughs> um, also, um, you know, I'm sure there was a desire to not give over any more time and any more resources. Um, but they, they're coming back. They, uh, the boys are back in town and they're ready yep. to occupy the place of, um, their inheritance. Uh, yeah. Also, uh, uh this so the the promised land is exactly that it's a it's a land of promise um it was given to them um as their inheritance what move your feet lose your seat yeah i didn't even remember what we said but i do now <laughs> thank you um it was given to them as an inheritance the lord very much said look i'm giving this to you and i'm giving this to you for the rest of time so so when you move away from the promise uh, and, and this happens in our life sometimes when you move away from the promise and you leave it vacated, 
of course, the enemy is going to put up everything that he possibly can to keep you back from that promise again, right? Yes. So, so you have got to move back into the place of promise, spread back out in the place of promise. Now, what does it take when when there when it's a big promise? What does it take in order to fulfill? Well, oftentimes we have promises that we've kind of put on the put on the shelf, and we said, "Well, Lord, you know, apparently that's a that's a promise for later." Ultimately, yeah. prayer. Um, ultimately prayer. Okay. Let me say this, your private stuff, the, 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 the private time that you have with the Lord, you can't move into those different territories of promise without doing it spiritually first. Um, and this is a, this is a reality for Israel at this time, um, as well as it is for us. They had to rebuild the temple first, and then from that temple, they had to rebuild the walls and then spread out back into their lands. Because the reality is that the temple or the spirit has to be the center of their society. And for us, the spirit has to be the center of our lives. If that, if that stronghold is not in place first, then it doesn't matter how much we, we we spread out and try to fulfill the promises that God has has laid out for us. If we don't have the spirit as central to our lives, then ultimately what winds up is that we are spread too thin into the promises. I, I you know there has there has been um, times where where I've asked my father, you know, my father um, um, coaches pastors and, and was a pastor for a long time of a few successful churches and and so you know the, the I've asked him what the secret of ministry is and he's always said prayer prayer is the secret to to all of the ministries that he's done and I think the the realities of that of of being um, of having that central centrality of our life built around our spiritual existence with Christ helps us to move into the promises that God has for us. If we don't, we, we just, we stick at square one where we're constantly rebuilding, constantly rebuilding. Notice that they didn't rebuild the walls first. That, that would be the natural inclination. They instead began the process of putting the temple back into place. Oh, God's thing. Yeah. Yes. And then moved on to the walls and then spread out. And I think, I think we, we would do well to get that right. Um, <laughs> it'll be just a few minutes. Yeah, it'll be just a few minutes. Uh, sorry, my mom is calling me currently right now. All right, let's let's finish up. Huh. Go yeah, ahead. You're ready. Let's finish up. Yes, yeah. We're yeah, baby. We're all done. Oh, is that it? Yeah. You you didn't talk about the Benjamites, did you? The descendants of the Benjamin of Geba lived in. Did I not? I don't think so. The descendants of Benjamin from Benjamites from Geba lived in Michmash, Aja, Bethel, and its settlements uh, in Anathoth, Nob, and Ananiah, in Hazor, Ramah, and Gitaim, in Hadid, Zebuim, and Nabalat, in Lod, and Ono, and in the Valley of the Craftsmen. Some of the divisions of the Levites of Judah settled in Benjamin. Yep. Did you have anything to say about that? Do you want me to text you to, like you did me yesterday? No, if you'll just give me one second, I'm just telling mom I'll, I'll talk to her in just a second. Um, no. So they, they, we were just finishing out the uh, the location uh, and the lineage of everybody. And uh, so, you ready to pray? I am, yes. Hold on one second. There. Just I, I gotta let the mom know what's what's going on. Yep, uh, and the tribe of Benjamin is the royal tribe, the tribe that um, the tribe of Benjamin was was well Benjamin was the favorite son after yes. um, after Joseph left. Yes, there's a lot of strong people coming from the tribe of Benjamin. Yes, actually, yeah, I didn't even thought about that. There's um, Saul came from Benjamin, so the first king comes from Benjamin. Also, um, Paul, uh, the apostle, comes from Benjamin. Uh, um, who else comes from Benjamin? I know this. I, I have, a, there's a list of people, but anyway. <laughs> yeah. So good. Levites, I, this really is a time for, um, Israel to refill. It's going to bother me. What's going to bother you? 
all the people from the tribe. <laughs> Uh, this is the time for for the people of God to refill uh, their places. Um, they are, this is the reboot. They are starting over now, um, and uh, they're still going to face some difficulties uh, moving into this time. But um, but uh, Israel's walls have been rebuilt. the the um, The fortifications are still in place. Are are now in place. And so ultimately they can begin to try and move life forward. And it sounds like the priests and such have put themselves back um, into a central role um, and that uh, that the Lord is is moving them forward. And and let me just, you know, prophesy over you. Maybe you've had a recent reboot uh, in your own life and that's totally cool. <laughs> some of us need some reboots every now and then. Um, maybe you've had a reboot in life and uh, and the Lord is moving you into a new place uh, and um, and uh, he's helping to bring about um, change. Uh, he's helping to bring about transformation. Oftentimes transformation comes when you trade in the old for the new, right? Uh, and so you can't continue in the old ways, uh, but God wants to help to move you into a new time with new new values, new thoughts, new strategies, new ways to do things. Um, and uh, so we enter into the Jewish New Year, 5779, um, with, uh, with those new things on our, uh, on our minds. Yeah. And God desires to grow you, make you fruitful, multiply you, um, and uh, fulfill the promises that the Lord has spoken to you. Amen. Yeah, let's pray. You ready to pray? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Father, we love you and we yes, adore you and thank you for your word. And God, every promise that you've spoken to us, Father, we um, uh, we cling to. Yeah. Like it is our, um, like like they will come to pass. Seven. Yeah. Father, I pray that you would forgive us for yeah. um, letting go of the promises that you've given us. God, your word is good and we... Uh, thank you for your words to us and when we let go of your promises when we let go of the things that you have told us yes, Lord. that you would do and that you have asked us to partner with you in God we, it's, it is like we have um, insulted the validity of your word yeah. and so Lord I pray that you would wash us forgive us for being uh, for being so willing to insult the validity of your word yeah. Father. Yeah. God forgive me I'm Have so on. sorry God, yeah, I pray that you would reestablish, um, that you would reestablish in my heart, mm -hmm. that you by your Holy Spirit would reestablish in my heart the authority of your word. Yeah. God, it is, Thank you, Lord. your word will never pass away. Everything else will pass away, but your word will remain. Mm -hmm. And so, Lord, we cling to your word. And we cling to you, the one who gave us your word. Yeah. Father, I pray that you would um, that you would remind us of those promises, God. Some of them may, be, may have been given to us so long ago. God, that you would remind us of them. Uh, I just feel like the Lord just said, there's sometimes uh, some people don't ask me for promises because they don't think that either they deserve them or that I'm good enough to give them or a combination of those two. Yeah. And the Lord says, if you don't have a promise that you're holding on to, um, he says two things to you. He says, open up his word and find the promises in there. And he says, ask him. He says, ask me for a promise because I have plenty of them for you specifically. Yeah. I have plenty of them that are that you are good enough to carry through, that you are worthy enough to be given. Um, and he says, I am valid. Um, my word is valid and I am able to keep it and, and I uh, am faithful to do so. Yeah. So, Father, we just, we agree with your spirit this morning. And yes, say, thank yes, you, Lord. Yes, you are. Ba, 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 ba. We agree. We agree in praise. We glory in your faithfulness, Father. We, we magnify you for your goodness. Yeah. And your ability to keep your promises. Father, we agree with you in our with our feet, God, we will yeah. go and do yeah. what it is that we're required to do, Lord, in order to see that promise fulfilled. Father, we participate with you today. Yeah. We participate with you today. Yeah, Father, thank you that you um, that you can 
uh, move us forward no matter yes. what no matter what our size looks like, no matter what our personal success stories are, no matter if we've completed all 30 steps of our <laughs> of, of our 30 step programs, Lord Jesus, Jesus. That, that you desire to take us for where we are and bring us into fruition. Yes. And so Father, right now we yield ourselves uh, to your to your spirit's leading. Uh, and, uh, and and we will not judge uh, ourselves or uh, or our conditions by the external judgments of the world, by the yardstick of the world, but instead by the yardstick of the Spirit, Father. Because when we judge things by the world standard, we get in trouble. But when we judge things by the Spirit standard, that's where we can uh, we can connect in with with uh, your thoughts and yeah. your mind and your will about things. Yeah. So Father, right now we uh, we reckon ourselves mm -hmm. by the reckoning of heaven, and uh, yes, and da, da, da. we ask Lord that you would uh, help us from where we are to move into now uh, the the destiny, the the promise, the the purposes that you have for us, O oh God, that uh, that you continually are pushing us towards. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. 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 Hey guys, have a great Amen. Wednesday. Find you a good place to go tonight. Meet with the people of God in midweek and love on them. And uh, we will see you guys back here tomorrow morning. It'll probably either be Kara and me both. Maybe we could do the Facebook thing where we're both on at the same time. That might be fun. Okay. Love you guys. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.